Okay, hello, this is the start of a 24-hour reading vlog and it starts literally in 2 minutes and 30 seconds because this is a reading vlog, uh, it actually is a 24-hour readathon that Milena, Milena, Milena Reads uh, organized and it starts at noon. Normally I start my 24-hour reading vlogs at midnight, so this is going to be a bit different. But yeah, as you can see, this is about to start in less than 2 minutes. So. Uh, very briefly. I do not have a set TBR yet. I do know I would like to start with The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson, but then I'm not sure what I'm going to choose. I have... I've chosen one book by Agatha Christie. I have it on script. I don't remember the title, but I, I will show it here. And also maybe I would like to read Tender is the Flesh because I'm currently reading uh, Eating Animals by uh, Jonathan Safran Foyer. So I was thinking that's a very short book and that is about a world where like we don't have... I don't remember exactly but like instead of eating animals we're eating like humans. <laughs> I don't think animals went extinct but like their meat was toxic or something so we, uh, we switched to eating humans and the, there are like farms where you're like people kill humans so other humans can eat. Yeah, it's kind of horror, I guess, uh, but yeah, aside from that, I'm thinking maybe reading like a Sherlock Holmes story. But yeah, it's up in the air. We'll see what I feel like. Okay, it's starting. Okay, yeah, it's noon. Let's go. So the first reading sprint has finished and I only managed to read the first chapter of um, The Hunting of Hill House, 34 pages, which isn't great, but I finished a bit earlier because there was like still like 5-6 minutes left of the sprint and I didn't want to start another chapter and like kind of finish it in an like awkward place. So the first chapter, so far I'm enjoying it. I feel like I might enjoy this more than... Um, what's the other book by Shirley Jackson that I've read? Um, we have always lived in the castle. So I didn't tell you anything because I was uh, in a hurry before uh, this read started. So The Hunting of Hill House, from what I know and from what I've gathered so far, is about this scientist, anthropologist, I think, called Dr. Dr. John Monty. You, maybe, <laughs> who thinks that this this house called Hill House is haunted and he gathers like, he calls them assistants, but like he uh, researches some people that had something to do with some kind of like supernatural things and he like writes letters to them, only some reply and so those people who replied become his like assistants, like people who will observe the things in the, at the Hill House. And only two people have written back, Eleanor and Theodore. So in the first chapter we're learning more about Eleanor and I think there's going to be another person called Luke, uh, who is like, uh, I think a son of the owner of the house. So that's the cast of characters. And so far I'm enjoying it. Uh, Eleanor has this like... Should I turn around? Okay. So far I'm really enjoying it. Eleanor is a bit, I don't want to say weird, but she has those kind of moments where she kind of starts um, daydreaming and the daydreams are a bit weird and you're like, is this just daydreaming or, or is there something wrong with her? <laughs> Question mark. So I don't know yet. Uh, we haven't learned much about Theodore. I think she she worked at a, at a lab, but she had some like 
psychic abilities maybe so yeah I would like to learn more about her oh I forgot because I was in a hurry in the morning I forgot to tell you about some other things that are on my like potential TBR like pile of possibilities for this read-along so let me show you two more things so I also have a play a raisin in the sun I don't know anything about this but I would like to make a video relatively soon about some like play like recommendations and there there are a few plays that I would like to read before I make that video and that's one of them is pretty popular um, then we have March volume 3 book 3 and if you've been on this channel for <laughs> quite some time you would know that I have read the first and second volume during like 24 hour readathons like the first I read during one that I did like two or three years ago then the second one I think that the first one is on private so you can watch it but the second one I read uh, last year I believe so it would be cool to finish this series during a 24 hour readathon oh looks like a reading sprint has started so let's do it So as you can see, another writing sprint is almost over and I finished second chapter. So I am 56 pages in and I thought since it's still bright outside, although it's quite gloomy, you can't see anything. <laughs> but I thought I would give you a, a little room tour because I did like redecorate and renovate my room a little bit. So I thought I'd show you. Uh, you have already seen the desk. Here it is. I added some little prints on the wall. Here is bookshelf. Oh, it's looking a bit messy. Whatever. <laughs> this is my non-fiction bookshelf and some other random things. <laughs> Next to that we have another bookshelf. From here to here it looks pretty nice, but <laughs> here it's a bit... This is my like modern classics bookshelf and it looks a bit weird. <laughs> and this is my historical fiction slash science fiction bookshelf and this is just random. Here we have this little decoration. This is me, hello. Uh, this, I don't know, chest of drawers with a fake plant, little cactus, what do you call it? Bed stand? Tent? Nightstand, nightstand. <laughs> uh, yeah, as you can see, I keep my currently reading books here. I'm kind of ignoring my currently reading, like, books for this, like, 24-hour readathon. Here we have my bed. Um, I did a little, like, wall collage that I'm not super satisfied with, but it's fine. Um, this, yeah, little decorations. I really like this bookshelf. Uh, it's, the problem is, as you can see, I have a lot of books on the top shelf, and here I only have this stuck because <laughs> it's so embarrassing, but let me show you. If I wanted to put a book this way, like, what is it, what do you call it? It's not horizontal, the other way. Like this, on this shelf, it does not fit. <laughs> so, it's embarrassing, but uh, it is what it is. I really like this bookshelf otherwise, so I'm keeping it. So this is all there. I have um, my closet. I'm thinking about painting it like dark green, but I still haven't made up my mind. Do you think it would look good or is it a bad idea? Because my walls are, are like this greenish gray and I would like the room to look a bit darker and I feel like painting the closet would help but yeah I don't know as you can see it is 2 p.m. so 56 pages that's a bit pathetic but <laughs> okay I can catch up still okay that's the end of the update okay I have made an executive decision that I'm going to put down the hunting of hill house for a little bit and wait to read it when it like gets dark which is a terrible idea because I'm a scaredy cat and I'm already a bit like disturbed like it's already a bit scary to me uh, like just the descriptions of the hill house and literally in the chapter that I just finished it said like the sun was setting so things are about to get even more creepy but yeah I wanna I want um, the correct like not what do you call it ambience so I'm even more scared so I'm going to read, hold on, I'm going to read A Raisin in the Sun. Also because I want to read something that I can finish relatively quickly, because I do feel like A Hunting of Hill House will take me a little bit more time. Like it's a classic, I find it a bit hard to read Shirley Jackson's writing style, so I feel like I can finish this a bit quicker than The Hunting of Hill House. I really like the description of on the back, 
it says blah 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 blah. Not only was it a pioneering work by an African-American playwright, Lorena Hansberry's play was also a radically new representation of black life. Wonder was resolutely authentic, fiercely unsentimental, and unflinching in its vision of what happens to people whose dreams are constantly deferred. In her portrait of an embattled Chicago family, Hansberry anticipated issues that range from generational clashes to the civil rights and women's movements. She also posed the essential questions about identity, justice, and moral responsibility at the heart of these great struggles. I'm really excited to read this. Hello, it is 7 p.m. and I finally finished Raising the Sun. I did have a bit of a break, uh, as you might have seen, because I need to cook my dinner, late lunch, I guess. Uh, I made this like roasted bell pepper slash tomato soup and it was really good. The reading sprints have finished and now until like 1.30 a.m. there are no reading sprints and it's 1.30 my time. <laughs> like 1.30 uh, in the morning at night, Sarah from Sarah's Perusals is going to hold some reading sprints. Not quite sure if I'm going to be still awake by then, but we'll see. So, um, when it comes to raising the sun, I... Okay, let me take off my glasses because I feel like there's a glare there. But then I can control if I'm blurry or not, so sorry about that. I gave it four stars. I liked it. I don't think I'm going to tell you anything else about the plot of this play, aside from that little like thing I read to you from the back of the book. Because nothing really happens, <laughs> like it really is about this family in Chicago living in this small apartment and the play kind of starts off when they come into like a little bit of money, uh, like the, the mother, the oldest uh, person uh, in this family, gets some money from like get some insurance money uh, because her husband died and 
that's kind of where things take off and I liked it, I liked how real the characters felt and it does talk about the, the kind of themes, the kind of social issues, if you will, uh, of that time that I have mentioned before, but it does it in a way that feels, it doesn't feel forced, like sometimes there are books where I feel like the characters are were written just to talk about some kind of social issue. Like, the first book that comes to mind to me would be Everything I Never Told You by Celeste Inc. It felt like each character was written just to talk about a specific social issue. I don't like the book, as you can tell, uh, but this doesn't feel like it at all. Those people feel like real people that are just living their life and experiencing those kind of different problems. It did feel a bit stagnant, like not much happened and um, it all takes place in one room in relatively short amount of time. So that's why I gave four stars, but overall I would definitely recommend it. We are seven hours into the readathon and I only managed to finish one play. But at least it got dark outside, so now I can go back to the haunting of Hill House. Okay, y'all, I couldn't find one of my cats, Flora, and I knew something was up. In my grandma's room, I heard weird sounds, weird chewing sounds, and turns out I think my mom left some food, like cat food, on the counter, and she has found it. And let me show you. This is what's left of it. Can you see it? What the hell? <laughs> this is how it looks normally. This kind of packet thing. What is wrong with you? And you didn't say anything, huh? You didn't knock on her. <sighs> Why are you like this? Okay, friendos, we're on coffee number two. Let's go. into uh, the haunting of Hill House and I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's not as scary as I thought it would be but also I'm someone who doesn't get scared that easily when I'm reading compared to when I'm watching a horror movie because for me the sounds are one of the most like scary things so reading kind of at my own pace without the scary sounds um, I don't know, it's not as frightening I guess but there are things that creep me out a bit so yeah, Sarah's reading sprints should start soon so I think I will like join one, one reading sprint and finish The Hunting of Hill House and then go to sleep for a few hours and hopefully finish one more book in the morning but I'm not a morning person so we'll see when I wake up also, as you can see, in the meantime, I have changed. I had a bath. I did not read in the bath because I didn't feel like it. <laughs> I'm really bad at, like, reading continuously, so this was a great idea, as always. Yeah, I had dinner, like, three hours ago. <laughs> and yeah, actually, tomorrow the readathon ends at noon, and at 1 p.m. there's a lecture I would like to attend. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Like, obviously I won't film that, but... I'm just saying, like, I will need... There are actually two lectures I would like to attend. So I will actually need, like, brain cells tomorrow <laughs> after I finish this readathon. And I'm not quite sure if I will have some spare left after reading reading for 24 hours. It is. It's good. I love the look of it. Like, I love... I just, like, love looking at, like, textbook It's 3 a.m. I finished it. Thoughts? I have none. What did I just read? I'll have to sleep on it and Google the hunting of Hill House ending. <laughs> okay, see you in the morning.
Good morning. I hate it here. <laughs> I slept for like an hour. It's seven thirty. Yeah. I will read my graphic novel, hopefully finish it. And by then I will be fully awake and I will tell you a little bit more about the book that I finished last night, The Hunting of Hill House, and about some changes in my TBR. I slept only for an hour because, well, I don't know why, I just couldn't fall asleep, but during that time I have um, decided to change my TBR a little bit, so I'll tell you later. finished March book 3. It is 9 a.m. and obviously I give five stars. Every single volume I gave five stars in this series and I feel like I haven't mentioned in the beginning uh, but this um, graphic, novel graphic novel series is about John Lewis's life. I have to say I really enjoy this format because currently I'm also reading Stumped from the beginning which I'm enjoying but since I'm not someone who's that familiar with like American history I find this so much easier to like grasp because you can put a face to a name, if that makes sense. Okay, so the update about my TBR. Why am I losing my voice? <laughs> I've decided not to read Tender is the Flesh because I started reading it last night because I couldn't sleep and I read the first chapter and I realized that I actually would like to finish Eating Animals by Jonathan Safran Foyer. I'm like halfway through this book. I've decided to finish that before I read Tender is the Flesh because I feel like after I learn about like modern farming, farming industry, I will be able to... it will be easier for me to like either criticize or praise this book for what it's doing because I do think it's... Um, it's an allegory. Like it clearly is supposed to be like a conversation about how in a modern day we treat meat and animals. So I feel like I need to finish that book uh, and I've decided to read, hold on I don't remember the title, I've decided to read A Psalm for the Wild Built by Becky Chambers because I have been thinking about uh, reading a book by Becky Chambers for a long time but the, the other book, the one that's really popular, is, is A Long Way to a Small Angry Planet and that book is like 500 pages long so I've decided to try out something shorter and it is an audiobook on script, so I hope I can listen to it while I get ready because there is the lecture that I have to attend at 1 p.m. So let's get going. We have three hours left of the readathon. The, the um, audiobook is four hours long, so I feel like I should be able to finish it in time. We'll see. <laughs> wanted to tell you that I finished um, the Be Becky Chambers book and it is 11.51 so I finished it with nine minutes to spare. Uh, I will quickly wrap up and like review the two books I haven't talked about yet after I come back from the lecture. Sorry about that but I'm in a hurry. <laughs> okay bye. Okay I'm back from the lecture and it is time to wrap this vlog. So overall I read four things 
one of them isn't here. Two of them I pretty much already talked about, so Marriage Volume 3 I gave 5 stars, five stars to, and A Race in the Sun I gave 4 stars to. The Haunting of Hill House. I ended up giving 4 stars, and I really enjoyed it. There, I read some reviews saying like that they didn't like how kind of objective the characters were about the hunting, but it, that's actually my favorite part. I mean, they are approaching it as scientists, and I liked their kind of banter between each other, uh, how they kind of were quite self-aware. Uh, and I find it interesting that in the book they actually mention a short story by Oscar Wilde, which is um, The Canterville Ghost. And it's a short story I really like. And the story of The Canterville Ghost is that uh, this American family bought this mansion in England and everyone in the area uh, in England knows that this mansion is haunted, like, it's a fact. <laughs> but the American family doesn't believe it and they move in and, you know, the ghost is haunting them. And instead of this being like an obvious story where, you know, the American family just like realizes, oh my god, the ghost is real, what do we do? They are just like, they just accept it. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's haunted. But like, we bought it, it's our house. So like, get over yourself. <laughs> so instead of being terrified, they're just like, Jesus, can you just like stop making noise at night? <laughs> so it's like, I don't know what you call it, like satire uh, on like ghost stories. And with this one, it's kind of similar, but here it's an actual like horror book. So while they're kind of trying to be objective and kind of uh, make jokes, they're still terrified deep inside. So that's interesting, but I, I, I like that they acknowledged the, the short story, like mentioned it in the book. And I didn't find this book very scary personally, but yeah, I, I told you about it earlier that I don't really get that scared with books. But also here I feel like um, the the horror is more like terror. Is that, that, that Does that make sense? It's like more of the fear of the unknown rather than like an actual physical thing that makes you scared or or like something gory, like it's not like that, it's more like if you're of the unknown and like what is it, is it actually ghost, what's going on? Yeah, the ending felt very abrupt, there was at some point a wife of the the doctor, the scientist uh, came and I, she was annoying but she was like purposefully annoying, like she was a comic relief and like I was infuriated with her but um, it was amusing. So it just, it didn't feel like quite like five star so I ended up giving it a 4 star, but I'm kind of torn between 4 star and 4.5 star. So definitely enjoyed it. And the last book is that Becky Jumper's um, novella, I guess. Uh, I think it's less than 200 pages long. And I ended up giving 3 stars. <laughs> and in my Goodreads review I said, I'm too bitter and cynical to appreciate this. <laughs> and it's true, like I wish I was a person that could enjoy this book. I really do. Uh, this is... A science fiction story but it's weird because I don't know that the world used to be like I would assume our world or very similar to our world uh, but like at some point um, robots became like sentient and uh, things have to had to be changed humans had to like rebuild society I guess and it's it's interesting because it's kind of the, the world that is described is kind of a utopia like like it's if right now we kind of snapped out of it and like made things right. So I kind of enjoyed that aspect. The main character, a tea monk it's called, and they are actually non-binary and I enjoyed that aspect because their like identity wasn't like the purpose of the story if you know what I mean. Like it was just them, it's just who they were and it wasn't like a plot point. So it felt very natural, I really like that. and. A tea monk is just a monk that has like a tea shop, but it's a special tea shop where like people come if they feel stressed or sad or like upset and they just have tea and talk about their problems or don't talk about them their problems or, or, but have this like calming tea and just feel better and I'm just like please can we can we make this happen here? But yeah, the, the, the whole story is that the monk doesn't feel that happy and I don't know how much I can tell because it's a novella, but they kind of set off on this journey where they meet a robot and at this point in time like humans and robots don't like interact. So they're like the first person ever since like the world changed to interact with a robot and they just talk about life, like have this like philosophical discussions and that's what didn't really work for me because the philosophical discussions felt a bit too surface level and a bit too like 
the whole thing felt a bit too like cookie cutter for me. A lot of people really enjoy Becky Chandler Bear's books because they're very like they're science fiction but they're cozy. This book did feel like warm hug but like I just it was too much for me. Like I said, I'm just too cynical, I can't enjoy that. So but yeah, there's there was a lot of aspects I did enjoy, but like overall it just like wasn't really, really my thing. So I ended up giving it three stars. So that's everything. The the last part of the vlog was a bit chaotic because I was really trying to like actually finish some books. I was being a bit lazy in the first half of the vlog, sorry about that. <laughs> but yeah, four things. But I am saying things because they're not necessarily books. I don't know like play the book, what is it? Anyway, time to go. Hope you enjoyed this vlog and I'll see you next video. Bye!